Hi class. I want to draw a figure for you that will hopefully put radiation laws three and four together and really help you figure out exactly what it is we're talking about with these uh, with these two radiation laws. And so um, what I want to draw for you is a, an XY plot on the y-axis is the energy emitted by an object and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the Sun and we're gonna take a look at the uh, energy emitted as a function of the wavelength okay and so when we do that we end up with a curve that looks something like this and I always have trouble drawing this thing so let's see actually it's not too bad this time okay so we have an energy curve here. And so the first thing that uh, we need to understand is that the, uh, the area under the energy curve, the area under the, am I going off the screen a little bit? The area underneath the energy curve represents the total energy emitted. The total energy emitted. So um, from a previous calculation from a couple of videos ago, we calculated that the energy emitted by the sun was 73,483,200 watts per meter squared. Okay, so this area underneath the curve represents 73,483,200 watts per meter squared, okay? We also calculated that the wavelength of maximum emission for the sun was 0 0.483 microns, okay? So hopefully now this figure is going to put these things together. So uh, what this figure represents um, is that <clears throat> the energy being emitted is a function of the wavelength. And so um, I'm not going to draw any numbers in here yet, but this, if we just pick a particular wavelength, okay, that uh, maybe it's this wavelength right here, whatever this is, okay? And we would draw a line up to where it meets the, um, the, the energy curve and then bring it across. So at this particular wavelength right here, as we bring it up, this particular wavelength um, emits this much energy. And this particular wavelength emits this much energy. This particular wavelength emits this much energy. Okay, and then we can just keep going. So this particular wavelength, bring it up to the curve, bring it over. This particular wavelength emits this much energy. And we just keep going, okay? This particular wavelength emits this much energy and so on, okay? And so uh, it's literally uh, the energy emitted as a function of the wavelength uh, being emitted by the object, okay? So the total area underneath the curve uh, equals the total energy emitted by the object. Okay, so the area underneath the curve for the sun represents 73,483,200 watts per meter squared. Okay, now let's draw in some uh, numbers for our wavelength here. Okay, and so um, right about, let's see, right about here, Okay, and I'm going to draw in uh, some numbers that we're familiar with. So let's draw in 0 0.4 microns. Okay, so that's the 
lowest end of the scale uh, for visible radiation. And uh, perhaps over here, let's draw in uh, 0 0.7 microns. So this is the upper end of the scale for visible radiation. Okay. So uh, let me draw these uh, up to where they meet the curve. You know, once you catch on to this, it's really pretty cool. So let's go here. And let's go to here. All right, so a couple of things. So the total, again, the total area underneath the curve represents the total energy emitted by the sun. That's 73,483,200. Okay, now uh, what we've drawn in here are two wavelengths that represent the range of visible radiation. So again, this is visible radiation. Okay, and so I'm going to draw in now this, just let's just shade this in. So right here, this represents visible radiation emitted by the sun. Okay, so another concept that we can pull together now is that, uh, remember how much of uh, the solar radiation that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere is visible radiation. Remember how much we said that was? We had mentioned that that was 43% of the energy that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere is in the form of vi visible radiation, okay? So 43% of the area underneath this curve is visible radiation, okay? We mentioned that uh, 49 percent of the incoming solar radiation that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere was in the form of infrared radiation. Okay, so this area underneath the curve here, okay, this represents 49 percent of the total area underneath the curve. Okay, and that 49 percent, okay, is infrared radiation. So 49% of the incoming solar radiation that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere is in the form of infrared radiation. Okay, So this area underneath the curve here, this is 49%. Okay. Now there's one other area underneath the curve that we uh, need to address. This little bit over here, which is less than 0.4 microns, and uh, this is the ultraviolet radiation. So, uh, if you remember what we said, that 7% of all of the uh, solar radiation that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere, 7% is ultraviolet. Okay, so the total area underneath the curve, again, is 73,483,200 watts per meter squared. 49% of that total is in the form of infrared radiation. 43% of this total is in the form of visible radiation. And 7% of this total is in the form of ultraviolet radiation. There is one more concept now that I need to get across to you, and that is, <clears throat> remember the, we're talking about law number three, Wien's displacement law. We said the wavelength of maximum emission for the sun was 0 0.483 microns, okay? So what that represents is that there is one wavelength that the sun emits more than any other wavelength, okay? And so here we go. This is, okay, the one wavelength right here that the sun emits more of than any other wavelength, okay? 
And so we, I guess we would make this the wavelength max, a wavelength of maximum emission for the sun, and that is 0 0.483 microns. Okay? So again, this is a, well, you know, once you can understand this figure, and you could draw this figure for any object, this, this figure just happens to be for the sun, we can draw this figure for the earth if you wanted to, we can draw this figure for a banana if you wanted to. It, it doesn't matter what the object is. Uh, every object has an energy curve. And so, um, you know, once you figure out uh, what the energy curve represents, uh, it really is helpful in our understanding of the radiation laws. So I hope this uh, really puts things together for you. And always, uh, if you have questions, let me know.